By the late the 1990s, a new kind of storm was brewing on the horizon of aerial warfare, and it began to stir real unease within European defense circles. The continent watched, and not idly, as the United States forged ahead with its X-45 and X-47 programs major unmanned combat air vehicles, signaling a terrifying leap in stealthy, autonomous combat drones, and it set off alarms. Europe faced a stark reality, a widening technology gap in a capability that would define the future. Its reliance on American assets for critical tasks a dependency thrown into sharp relief during the Kosovo War, was no longer tenable. Faced with the chilling prospect of being outmaneuvered in the skies of tomorrow and fueled by a powerful political current, notably championed by France for true strategic autonomy, European nations knew they had to make a move. A big one. It meant nothing less than forging an independent European defense technological and industrial base. It meant mastering a whole new universe of technologies for advanced Yukovs, from the almost mythical, very low observability designs and rock-solid autonomous flight controls to the unseen sinews of secured data links and sensor fusion. These were monumental hurdles, no doubt. But this potent mix of evolving military needs, the undeniable American lead, and Europe's own burning ambition for self-reliance, set the stage for a project of unprecedented audacity, the Neuron Program. Building on pioneering French demonstrator work by Dassault Aviation, like the AVED Petit Duc France, with President Chirac at the helm, seized the initiative. Then, at the 2003 Paris Air Show, the curtain rose. Defense Minister Michel Alliot marie formally launched Neuron. This was to be no mere aircraft. It was a technology demonstrator, an experimental crucible, deliberately not for the front lines, but designed to hammer out and prove the vital technologies for Europe's next generation of combat aircraft. The mission was clear. Tackle the Yukov gap head-on, learn the hard lessons from recent conflicts, drive European strategic autonomy, and crucially, preserve and sharpen the continent's high-end aerospace design skills in the brutal arenas of stealth and autonomous systems. And it demanded a new playbook for collaboration. The Neuron program wasn't one nation's dream. It became a unique six-nation pact, a complex dance of international effort. France's Dassault Aviation took the lead, the prime contractor shouldering responsibility for the overall design the nerve-wracking final assembly, the all-important flight control system, and the dark arts of stealth integration. But this was a team effort. Sweden's Saab came in strong, crafting the equipped fuselage, the sophisticated avionics, including the digital brain and the fuel system. Italy's Leonardo focused on the internal weapons bay, the electrical heart, and air data systems. Spain's Airbus Defense and Space handled the wings, the ground control nerve center, and the vital data links. Greece's Hellenic Aerospace Industry provided the rear fuselage and engine integration. And Switzerland's RUAG brought its expertise in wind tunnel testing and crucial interfaces. This was the team, a constellation of Europe's finest, tasked with navigating the labyrinth of shared work, distributed genius, and international cooperation on a scale rarely seen. The design phase alone was a Herculean effort, sculpting a diamond-like flying wing, a shape born for stealth. Advanced composite materials were the skin and bones, essential for shedding weight and deflecting radar. The Rolls-Royce Turbomeca Adur engine, a proven workhorse, was chosen, but its integration was pure artistry a dorsal S-duct intake, and a flattened, low-observable exhaust, all to hide it from watchful eyes and heat-seeking sensors. But the real beast to tame was the flight control system for a tailless design that was, by its very nature, unstable. Dassault poured in its decades of fly-by-wire wisdom, while Saab championed a modular, open-architecture avionics system. 
the unknowns of validating stealth and forging stable autonomous control laws, these were the challenges that kept engineers awake at night. Components began to flow from factories across Europe. Then, in the south of France, at Dassault's Istres facility, these intricate pieces began to merge. January 2012, the first neuron demonstrator was unveiled. A vision in gray, sleek, and potent, it was a victory cry for the manufacturing and assembly teams. And it meant one thing. The real trials were about to begin. Ground tests started immediately. Engines roaring to life, taxi tests, and painstaking checks of every control system, all stealing the neuron for its first flight. December 1, 2012. The neuron took to the skies. That 25-minute flight, fully autonomous, a silent predator watched by a dedicated joint team, was more than just a successful maiden voyage. It was a seismic event. It marked Europe's defiant entry into the high-stakes world of large-scale, stealthy Yukov technology. As Dassault CEO Eric Trappier declared, it was the reward for nine years of intensive effort, a resounding vindication of the collaborative spirit and the incredible feat of systems integration. But the neuron was far from done. It was just stretching its wings. What followed was an intense operational life of flight testing, a relentless campaign from late 2012 to early 2017, logging over 125 sorties. This wasn't joyriding. This was about pushing the envelope until it screamed. The test program danced across Europe. Estrus laid the groundwork. Then it was off to the specialist arenas. Sweden's Vidsel test range became the ultimate stealth challenge, where Saab and Swedish defense experts put the neuron under the microscope, measuring its radar signature with exacting precision. Far south, at Decimo Manu in Sardinia, Italy, the focus shifted to the internal weapons bay, with Leonardo overseeing simulated releases of inert bombs, a critical test of a Yukov strike heart. Year after year, the neuron executed its missions, systematically proving its revolutionary technologies. It conquered diverse flight regimes with stable, autonomous control. Its stealth credentials were confirmed. It opened and closed its weapons bay like a seasoned pro, all on its own. It talked to the ground via secure data links. And then in March 2015 came the showstopper. Near Istres, the Neuron flew in perfect formation with a Rafale fighter and a Falcon 7X jet. A breathtaking display of autonomous prowess, it offered a tantalizing glimpse into the future of manned-unmanned teaming. This machine wasn't chasing medals or a combat record. Its evolution was forged in lines of code, in iterative software upgrades, in one groundbreaking demonstration after another. It didn't need permanent new parts. Its upgrades were invisible, intellectual. Its victories were the validated technologies, the hard data, the proof that Europe could do this. The neurons stared down formidable R&D giants, achieving that whisper-quiet, very low observability in a large, complex machine. That was challenge number one, met with radical aerodynamic shaping, exotic composites, and radar-absorbing materials. The diamond-like form, the S-duct intake, the flattened nozzle, every line, every surface, was a soldier in the war against detection. And then, taming the wild aerodynamics of a tailless, unstable aircraft with autonomous flight control, that was a software and systems engineering Everest, conquered Integrating the complex offerings of six nations into one seamless thinking machine, orchestrated through a shared digital design world like Cadia and Delmia, that was a triumph of collaboration. And proving autonomous mission management, from Leonardo's intricate weapons bay to Airbus Spain's ground control, showed Europe had mastered the full UCAV equation. Against its American contemporaries, the Neuron held its own in ambition and early scale, but its true earth-shaking significance wasn't just about matching stealth metrics. It was about the how, 
This six-nation collaborative led by de Soult was Europe's distinct answer to the U.S. model. Nuren was a declaration. Europe could independently master these elite technologies. Europe could write its own rules for collaboration. The flight tests concluded around 2016 to 2017. The Nuren, its primary mission accomplished, stepped back from the active roster, as all good demonstrators do. But its echoes are louder than ever. Its soul lives on in the terabytes of data, in the priceless engineering wisdom it imparted. This is its powerful legacy, now directly shaping Europe's next-generation combat air systems, the future combat air system, FCAS and SCAF. The Neurons validated stealth, its autonomous flight control DNA, its modular integration lessons, its MUM-T insights, its weapons bay know-how. These are not just memories. They are the living, breathing foundations for the next generation fighter and remote carriers of tomorrow, the Dassault Neuron. It's more than a footnote in aerospace history. It's a landmark, a bold assertion of European will a crucible where multinational collaboration met advanced technology and forged success. It was the critical testbed that proved Europe had the grit and the genius for stealth, for autonomy, for the complex symphony of systems integration. Its journey from concept to the edge of tomorrow laid the vital groundwork. Today, the technologies blooded by the neuron demonstrator are the very bedrock upon which Europe is building its future in the air.